Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and thank you for spending some time with me today because in this video, we have to talk about some things that are making your home look cheap, but that are actually easy to fix and pretty inexpensive. But once you see them, there is no going back. They cannot be unseen. The first thing we have to talk about are those blinds. Are the mini blinds, are the window treatments in general because as an interior designer, Great window treatments are my favorite thing. If you've been here a while, you know this. I talk about it all the time, and I genuinely believe it's those small details that really make the difference. And I can tell you, like, just, it is factual, okay? I have seen, you know, like, a rundown mobile home and a multi-million dollar house with the same mini blinds, okay? The same mini blinds. And they're functional, I'll give you that. They yellow over time, they get dusty, they don't look good. It's something that you don't want in your home to be like the standout feature moment, like, oh, we have the horrible blinds here. So what do you do in place of that or instead? You could do a Venetian blind, you could do a solar blind, you can do a natural fiber, you could do a Roman shade, you could do a bamboo Roman shade. Oh, love that for you. There's so many options out there that are worth looking into. And when it comes to draperies, that is like my moment, okay? That is what makes me the happiest in a home when I see great window treatments because immediately we're elevating everything. And like I said, I don't care what your home costs, what the value is or how expensive it was, any of that stuff, none of it matters. I don't even care what type of house it is, okay? If you have an apartment, if you have a mobile home, you have, you know, like a hilltop mansion, invite me over. If you have a lake house or a beach house, <laughs> don't ask for my advice without asking me to come and see it in person because obviously, but you know, I don't care what it is. Great window treatments are gonna make it look beautiful, gonna make it look gorgeous, and they need to be straightened out. One thing to remember when it comes to blinds and window treatments in general is that if you live in a neighborhood with a homeowners association, you may have limitations as to what you can do. So be sure you check in with them before you get in trouble with them. But uh, yeah, we can definitely upgrade things. We can do things that are a little bit nicer. Those like metal mini blinds from the 80s, we can say goodbye to them and we can do something nicer that will fit in with those kind of uh, specifications your HOA may have. What I will say though, is that many people think custom window treatments are very expensive and they certainly can be, but right now the best semi-custom window treatments are on Amazon. So be sure you head to my Amazon storefront to check out some of those amazing window treatments. I'm also going to link for you some of the slightly more higher end, more customized drapes that I personally love. I have them in my studio, I have them in my living room. Also, uh, they're available from a small business on Etsy. I'm gonna link them below in the description box. So be sure you head down there and check them out. But those window treatments are going to make your home look more luxurious. It's time to say goodbye to those maybe like those window treatments that are a little bit more drab, that are just a little tired and really dress up your space. Now, if you need any help, I'm at your service. I actually just worked with a client who, you know, she had these great ideas for what she wanted in terms of the drapes and the window treatments in her home. And she was just like, there's so many options out there. What do I do? We work together and we're pulling together something amazing in her home. And I could do the same for you if you head to the link in the description box down below or go to intro.co slash Garrett Lachic and book a one-on-one -on -one virtual design consultation with me where I can answer any and all of your design and decorating questions. There are also different lengths of sessions available and be sure you have those VPNs turned off because the times available are shown in your time zone. And just so you international girlies know, yes, I do work with clients all over the world. I actually recently worked with someone in Japan. So I am here for all of you too. Now, the next major thing in your home that could easily make it look cheap is it's not the cheapest thing on this list to fix, but it is something I want you to think about. And that is a box store kitchen. And I don't mean getting your kitchen materials from a box store. Like, you know, whether you're going to a local hardware store, whether you're going to a major international brand, you can go to Ikea and get beautiful, gorgeous, custom looking kitchens. It's all about the effort you're applying in terms of the finish and the design and the installation. That's what's going to make the difference because custom cabinetry can be custom made, but it's all about how it fits in the space and how it works together. It's not just about the fact that, oh, it's a custom milled door with a custom trim. Like that doesn't matter in terms of the fit. You know, you can really achieve beautiful, beautiful things by getting your kitchen from a hardware store. All right. And I don't care whether it's the 
cabinetry, whether it is a countertop or the backsplash material or the appliances, it's all about the details you're putting in and the attention to detail you're giving when you're making those selections and you're having them installed. For example, having panels and filler pieces installed can actually make your kitchen look like it fits more custom into a space as opposed to having something that's like, oh, you know, these are just the cabinets as they came and they're next to each other, they're screwed in all together, that's the kitchen. It requires a little bit more effort than that, but you can achieve something beautiful by giving it that extra attention. And one tip I really love for kitchens, and I'm always saying is add as many drawers as possible because they add more functionality, they add more accessibility, they allow you to take more advantage of the space in the cabinets. That's a very customized feature, but it doesn't have to be. Like you can just get cabinets with drawers in it from a hardware store, like that doesn't matter. But also something else I love to see that adds a very luxury look to a kitchen is an oversized vent hood. And that's not that big of a deal. Actually, getting a bigger vent hood requires you to have less cabinetry. So maybe you're even saving money on the cabinetry and putting a little more into the vent hood. Maybe it evens out. These are things you can do in a kitchen that will make it look more expensive, more luxurious, more customized, and get you that look for less. They say, you know, kitchens are the heart of the home. Kitchens sell homes, all of this. Don't underestimate the importance of the kitchen in your home in terms of not only the design, but the functionality. And sometimes, those customized features can do that for you. So don't let your kitchen be the one where it's like cabinetry is thrown up on the wall and like we have a place to put the dishes, but okay, it's just there. Have it be a little bit fitted, a little bit more built in because it will make your home look luxurious and expensive and not cheap, but it doesn't have to break the bank. Something else we have to talk about that can make your home look cheap very easily is you've heard all over social media, every designer loves to tell you that your rugs are too small and you have to have the right size rug. Well, as an actual designer, as someone who actually, you know, trained, studied, went to school for this, I'm gonna tell you why. Your rugs being too small makes your house look cheap because it makes it look empty. It makes it look like it's ill thought out. And it's not like I see a rug that's too small and I'm like, oh, the space looks cheap. It looks horrible. But when you see it compared to a space where the rug is the correct size, it definitely does. So having the correct size rug in every room in your home makes it look more luxurious and beautiful and expensive. And I don't think you have to spend a ton of money to achieve this. There are affordable rug options out there. Uh, natural woven like sisal rugs tend to be very inexpensive, but look really good. And that's a good place to start with. You could do a free formed rug, like a cowhide, something like that, you know, can definitely elevate a space and get you a layered look that could feel really good. But having the right size rug in every room makes a difference. Having the right size rug in your bedroom will make it look more sumptuous, more relaxing, more elevated, luxurious, maybe a little sexy too, and I love that for you. But it can definitely elevate the space. Same thing goes for your living room. Having a rug that extends at least partially under all of the furniture, I like it to be at least halfway, if not three fourths of the way, but if your furniture all sits on the rug, even better. It makes it look like the room is bigger. It makes it look like your furniture fits the space better because it, it takes advantage of the space. It makes it look bigger by having the correct proportions in that area. The same thing even happens in a kitchen with a runner. A runner will actually make it look like your cabinetry is further apart. So it makes the kitchen look more open, more expansive. And because a runner is very linear, it's going to make your kitchen look longer and more expansive. It's an easy way to trick the eye into making your home look bigger by having the right size rug. Same thing goes for a dining room. When you're choosing a dining room rug, you should be able to pull a chair out and sit in it with the chair still being on the rug. Okay, that's how you find the right size rug for your dining room. And if you're doing a round rug, get it oversized. There are so many things out there you can do, but the right size rug is going to make your home look luxurious. Don't be that person that gets like a doormat and puts it in your living room as a rug. Like, it's not, okay? It's not, sweetie. Uh, it doesn't look good. It looks like a doormat. So let's focus on getting the right size rug. But like I said, they don't have to be super expensive. If you're like, I wanna get a quality rug that's a beautiful natural material, look for a vintage wool rug. Okay, go on Etsy. All right, I find them there all of the time. They're so much cheaper than a brand new wool rug because they have some age on them. They're typically cleaned and you just wanna make sure of that. They also come in odd sizes because a lot of them are you know, measured in centimeters as we're in the US, we do inches. So you find interesting sizes there too. Uh, like I said, a cowhide not for everybody and they do take a little bit of extra maintenance but i find that they're, they work for me. My dog does not like it. He's not gonna be all over it and everything. So it works out beautifully. I have it in my studio here and I love it. 
Um, there are lots of options out there for you to find something that works, that fits your space, that is budget friendly and affordable. There are lots of options out there for you to get that rug that fits your home perfectly on any budget. But what I will also say is I'm constantly coming up with these tips and trying to share them with you to get you those creative solutions that are going to work in your home, which if you've been here, you know this. And if you have not been here, if you are new, ooh, let's change your life, honey. Join us, become a part of the Lashik family by hitting that subscribe button and giving this video a like. We would love to have you here with us. And I'd also like to give a major, major thank you to those of you who have been showing up, who have been watching these videos in the first hour it's posted. You have those notification bells turned on because it truly makes a world of difference to content creators like me. It helps us defeat and battle YouTube's algorithm and get our content shared so we can change the world by eliminating bad design one home at a time. The next thing we have to talk about that is making your house look cheap. It's a design mistake. It's a mistake um, and it cannot be unseen once you see it. Is a cheap pillow insert. I've talked about this before and I will take this I, to the end of the days, okay? I do not like a cheap pillow insert because I can always spot them. I can always see them. If your pillow is like crushed and it's flat and it's like a little crunchy, why is it even there? What is it doing? What comfort is it adding to the home? It's not. It's like a decorative pillow that nobody wants to sit near because it's not comfortable. It's, it's not comfortable and I don't like it. Um, you have to have a good pillow insert. A pillow insert should have some density to it. It should be fluffy. It should have a certain weight to it that looks relaxing and a fullness. And it brings that comfort level to the space. It makes it be like, oh, like, can't you just see yourself sitting back and relaxing in the pillow, like conforming to your shape? Like that's the message it sends. But when I see like these like old stale lumpy pillows, it's like, it's like what you get at a hotel. Okay. It's like, how many people have sat on it? How often has it been cleaned? And the answer is never. Okay. I don't like that. The pillow insert is going to change your life. Now I have got my favorites linked to my Amazon storefront. There are down pillows and there are down alternative pillows linked there for you. So be sure you check them out. But let me show this one to you. I love a lumbar pillow. Okay, like everybody knows that about me. I'm gonna choose a lumbar pillow over a basic square pillow every day because I like the proportions and what they do. You know, they add like a linear quality to a sofa. Love a lumbar pillow. And I want them to have a certain plushness to them. I don't think you need to be like, oh, karate chop the pillow and have it like smushed in half. Like that doesn't look good. And I didn't even do that in the center of this pillow. I wanna see a pillow that looks fluffy, that has a certain width to the side of it. And you're only gonna get that through something that is like that spun down alternative that's light and fluffy or an actual down pillow. But I also think they need to be overstuffed because a pillow insert is like a bag of chips. You know, it's like, you're like, oh, I'm gonna get this bag of chips. I'm gonna get myself a little treat from the grocery store. And you're so excited and you open it up and it's half empty and you're like, where are the chips? Like it was all air. Pillow inserts are just like that. So you get them oversized, at least one size larger so that you get density, but they also will, you know, conform and they will smush. Like if you get them that are too overstuffed, they will be rock hard and they'll look comfortable, but it'll be like, like, you know, like sitting on a marble pillow. Like nobody wants that. Just get the next size up and you'll be good to go. But you want density in a pillow. You want it to be relaxing. As a matter of fact, oh, there we go. Perfect. I love it. My husband just pointed out to me that you all have not seen these lights behind me, but I did mention them in my studio makeover video. The studio makeover video is linked right here and in the description box. Um, I will link these for you because they are really amazing. And look at, it's just like a touch on and off. They're dimmable. How fabulous is that? I know you're loving it. I went for the black. They come in brass and they also come in silver. So be sure you head down to my Amazon storefront to find those guys. Let's talk about something else that could easily make your home look cheap. And this is probably a slightly more difficult one to fix, but it can be done and it will make a difference. And that is chalky builder grade paint. And you all know exactly what I mean when I say that. It's like, you know, you buy a brand new built house or you buy a house that somebody built brand new but never had repainted, uh, or you're moving into a new apartment and the landlord painted everything fresh. And it's like the white walls that are like so chalky, like you smudge your hand on it and it's like, you can see the handprint. Also remember, you know, before we get into all of this, if you have your landlord there, you might have to get their permission and you may have to paint it back. So just keep that in mind. But the chalky white paint, it's not the matte or the flat finish paint that is making your house look cheap. As a matter of fact, I love flat finish paint. Um, that's what I have on the walls here because I have textured walls and it, and it hides a little bit of that texture and it kind of makes them look a little bit smoother, more like velvet. But if you're going to do flat paint, 
it has to be very high quality. Not the most expensive, but you know, the mid tier is going to be good enough to get you a nice flat paint. Uh, honestly, a lot of people say you can't clean it. I clean my walls all of the time. I like take a little spray on them and wipe it down and nothing happens. Like, I mean, whatever I'm trying to get off comes off on the I don't know, I've never had an issue, but people always comment that and say it. Um, but it's something to think about. I don't like cheap paint. I don't like cheap paint because the quality matters. And it's not something you see, it is something you feel, it is something you experience as you live in that space and as you deal with maintaining it. So yeah, the cheap kind of builder grade chalky paint is making your house look cheap. And it probably is also making your walls get scuffed up a lot easier than they really uh, should be. Like, you know, I mean, people are very like, oh, the walls are delicate, they're fragile. They're like, honestly, they're not. It's probably just the paint. So you really wanna think about what are we doing in terms of the quality of the paint, not just the color, but the quality itself. You don't get the cheapest paint ever. Not only does it make it harder to paint walls, it, you know, doesn't go as far, you have to apply more of it. It's a whole mess. What I recommend is getting your painter involved and asking them what quality of paint they like, whether it's a flat paint, whether it's an eggshell or a satin, or you're doing like, you know, a high gloss moment on your trim. I wouldn't do high gloss walls. Like I would do a lacquered wall, but that's also really difficult because you see like every wave or detail in the wall. So, you know, that's definitely not for DIYers. You've got to get a professional in for that one, but the quality of everything in your home matters. And I don't say you have to get the most expensive everything in your home because that's not the answer for everyone. Okay. Like it's, it's just not. So getting the right quality though makes a difference and it will make sure your home, you know, stands up to the elements and to the test of time. You don't want paint that's going to lose its pigmentation or discolor. You don't want paint that is impossible to clean. And that builder grade chalky paint is exactly that. We can clock it from a mile away. You touch it and it's like sandpaper and you're like, oh my goodness, like my walls are like velvet. Your builder grade paint's like sandpaper. Uh, maybe it's good for exfoliating, but that's not what I need my walls to do for me. Now, I believe I said something about your kitchen and how important it is and people saying it really is the heart of the home. And I agree, which is why you may need to check out this video right over here all about design mistakes making your kitchen look gross because it's the heart of the home. It shouldn't be disgusting. Be sure you check out that video right over here and I will see you over there.